Ammonia refrigeration. Somebody after the 8.30 class came up and said, hey, I worked over with the HEB. I know the HEB company in San Antonio has a lot of refrigeration capability on the east side, northeast side of San Antonio. They use a lot of ammonia refrigeration. The ammonia refrigeration systems they use are a lot of vapor compression where the working fluid is ammonia. You don't want to leak in that because it's a little more toxic or deadly or it can be an asphyxiant to the worker. But they do have alarms in those systems, but it's cheaper and whatever, historical reasons. But uh, so think about this. I covered up boxes here. We're going to talk about ammonia as a refrigerant. What's ammonia? NH3. So ammonia can go through the condenser, be cooled, pass through the expansion valve, be ready then to evaporate in the evaporator, and it's just like another refrigerant 22 or 134A or 410A. This is how it be used, but I covered up something over here. What did we cover up over here? What's needed under this black box? What we're going to be taking in low P, low pressure, ammonia, NH3. And what do we need to come out of this black box to go into the condenser? High pressure vapor, like superheated vapor. This would be low pressure ammonia that's uh, saturated vapor. And do we have uh, high pressure? I don't spell very good. Ooh, look at that. I gave you the answer. <laughs> High P uh, superheated vapor. Well, what would be under there, to most of us would say, just give us a compressor. We'll do the job. But what's the compressor? The kilojoules of work per kilogram of mass flow through the compressor is high. You say, well, I need a device that can boost the pressure. I wish a pump would do the job because the pump could be run very cheaply. Didn't we emphasize that? Isn't that one of the takeaway points of this class? Oh, yeah, it is. So you think, how can I get ammonia that's in the vapor state into a liquid so I could put it through a pump, which is much more efficient, to boost the pressure of a liquid? The engineers and scientists that first figured this out were geniuses. So they said, look, it, if I have water, H2O, and I have cold water or cool water. If I put that ammonia in the presence of cool water, it likes to get absorbed into the cool water. So guess what? It's absorption refrigeration cycle. You think about that a little bit. People that have um, that are fishermen that uh, know about temperature effects on the oxygen content of water, or maybe you have an aquarium, you know about that. It's you know that certain when you have a cold water like cold lake water, there's plenty of oxygen that are, is in there, and the fish are happy, and they avoid zones of hot water, especially in the summer. They can't breathe well. They avoid it. The fish do. And if it's too hot, they kind of die and then float. Okay? So it's the same principle as cool water. The ammonia gets absorbed. It's in the liquid solution. It's a strong solution. What do you mean strong? A lot of ammonia is in the water. Once I boost the pressure, I want the ammonia to come out. How do I get the ammonia to come out? Make it hot water. When you heat it, you basically generate the ammonia vapor. It comes out of the solution. It's not happy in the solution anymore. And then you get the stream of ammonia vapor to go and be cooled in the condenser. You have a weak solution, meaning it's a lot of water with just a little bit of ammonia in it. You drop the pressure, put it through a valve, and it goes back to the absorber. But I have to cool it, so I have this cooling going on. So I have this additional heating in the generator and additional cooling in the absorber. That's the genius of the ammonia water absorption refrigeration cycle. Well, there's two common enhancements. Do you want any water to go this way? No, you sure don't. You really want to have pure ammonia. So they'll have something called a rectifier to really purify that stream. 
And that basically is to feed back any liquid water. So you're, you're, it's a rectifier system. I'll just put it as a black box. And the other thing is, is right after the pump, this was nice and cool. It's still cool after the pump. But as soon as I get it to the generator, what am I going to do? I'm going to be heating it. And likewise, this stream that's coming down here, it's warm. But right after I drop the pressure, what am I going to be doing? I'm going to be cooling it. So I'd really like to make warm water cool, and I'd like to make cool water warm, right? To reduce the amount of heating in the generator and the amount of cooling in the absorber. You're a clever engineer. What are you going to do? That job calls for a heat exchanger. Ta-da. <laughs> and so there's this beneficial intermediate transfer so that when it, the weak solution comes into the absorber, it's a little cooler than it could have been. And when the strong solution goes into the generator, it's a little warmer than because of that heat transfer. That's going to benefit. That, that regenerator uh, helps performance. In an ammonia water absorption refrigeration system, what fluid goes through the evaporator? Remember the top is our condenser, then expansion valve, then finally down here is our evaporator. The fluid's going that way. Uh, is it ammonia and water mixture? Only water, only ammonia, hydroxyl ammonia, or ammonia hydroxide? Well, these seem to be the most sophisticated answers. I think it's one of them because we need sophistication in our life. No, only ammonia. The water is not providing the refrigeration effect. It's, it's the mechanism by which you run it with a pump instead of a compressor. What is the advantage of an absorption refrigeration system? Low work input per ton of refrigeration, high work input per ton of refrigeration, low refrigeration temperature, high refrigeration temperature. It's a low work input per ton of refrigeration. Exactly right. Good job. So absorption refrigeration. It, it is not common in North America, but it's very, very common in Southeast Asia and other parts of the world. And it really comes down to two people tried it, bought into it, and then told their friends, forget it, it's a lemon. Because it didn't work well on its maiden voyage out into the in the into the commercial world. So you'll still see it. Train will sell it. Other companies will make it and sell it, but very few actually run in, in North America, and you'll see a lot of it other places of the world. Okay? Is it going to come back? Is it going to be more? Could be, especially as the cost of energy. If the cost of energy goes up, the cost of energy stays low, then you know, the high-efficiency absorption system is not going to be popular. All right. Well, I'm done with that section. Any comments or questions for me? Oh, Professor, is there any question like this on the final exam? Well, maybe like the multiple choice questions. I've had those on exams before. But uh, are there any problems in the end of the chapter that uh, make us make some quantifying calculations in um, water, ammonia, absorption system? No, they're done. Well, then why did you just spend 15 minutes covering this in lecture? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that was a mistake. But there you go. I'm telling you, there's just no problems in homework or no problems on the final exam with absorption refrigeration systems. Thank you very much for your attention.